you. Uh, my name is Abhiman. I, I am a faculty at I am Ahmedabad. Uh, I'm primarily a macroeconomist, and uh, I'm going to talk about benchmarking gold price in India. You know, uh, the, I think the prelude to my talk is already covered a lot by uh, Dr. Uh, Shomanathan. I'm very thankful to him that he covered quite a bit of those things, uh, you know, which help me who I am uh, talking on this particular subject, okay? Uh, again, I think what uh, Secretary was talking about, I am not a very a big fan of gold per se. My primary uh, role here to talk about benchmarking gold price, okay? So, the, uh, you know, gold as many of, uh, we know uh, gold, everybody talks about gold has several features. You know, we talk about as a financial asset, we talk about uh, gold as a consumption, uh, you know, commodity. Gold sometimes used just as a commodity. Gold is possibly the only uh, global currency. So if that is the case, then we need to have benchmark price for it, and we do not have it at present. So I come from, particularly from that particular uh, uh, perspective. And in this context, even gold has a very specific value in national accounts, you know. You find that gold as, as a separate entity, it comes in national accounts. It's not consumption, it's not, uh, you know, investment or government spending, it comes as a part of valuables. So you can find, I think it has uh, various roles playing in various ways, but we really lack a kind of benchmarking uh, in the context of India. Okay, this is a technical paper. I'm working with uh, one of my uh, junior colleagues there, Shonok. So I'm going to talk about, you know, primarily what I'm going to uh, cover here is not the technical part, but the uh, issues what comes for benchmarking, uh, because I am kind of involved into financial benchmarks. Okay, so uh, my role during last two and a half years has been creating financial benchmarks, so I come from that perspective. So if I, I would require your support, you know, or your understanding whether we can go for a financial benchmark or a benchmark for gold price in India. Okay, so that's the way I, I'm going to give you quite a bit of data and then from there I'm going to show you how prices vary in India of the same commodity, of same quality, of same market, you will find prices vary. And why does it vary? Very little answer is known. And in that context, I think the need for benchmark would be, uh, would be uh, very, very important. I'm going to talk a little bit about current methodologies of benchmarking gold, what is being practiced in the world. And then based on that, if we can think of proposing something for India. Okay, so let me see, I think Indian uh, gold consumption. Uh, you, uh, we, we know that we are uh, in the the second largest uh, country in the world in terms of uh, gold consumption. And this has been increasing over a period of time. A large part of that consumption, 50%, I think the gold demand it comes for the wedding jewelry itself, okay? And in terms of, I think, uh, in terms of central bank's uh, reserve, uh, my uh, friend was talking just few minutes before, you will find that India also there, we are at the uh, 10th uh, largest uh, you know, um, uh, reserves of gold, what we have. And the, the point is, you know, you find gold as a, uh, as a commodity we are getting it, central banks are also putting it, and, uh, you know, you need it for your jewelry, and each having very different way of valuing it. And that is where the, the, the basic problem lies. And as a market, if you find gold jewelry market structure, you will find there is very different. You know, you have bridal market, you have daily wear, then you have fashion, but of which uh, there are quality differentials. You will find uh, the, the 24 karat gold, 22, 18. I do not want to talk about these things, but what it, I'm going to uh, tell you that there is a different market segmentation of gold itself and each having a different, uh, you know, quality of gold, for each of those we require a benchmark. Not just about 24 karat, you need for each of them uh, to have a benchmark price so that, you know, as an individual, when you go to purchase, a, uh, purchase some gold, or at least once in a year you go to a shop, you would know what rate it is. Do you know that, you know? When you go to a particular shop, 
you know, go to maybe Tanis, you ask them, they will tell you, today's rate is this. Do you know that today's rate it is? We have no idea about it. And this is what I'm going to show you some data, you know, how this varies across, across, uh, you know, markets, across, even in, in, in same market. Okay, the first is in terms of, I think, as an investment, gold as an investment asset, you will find, uh, I think, India, uh, in terms of gold for uh, gold bar and coins, India is around the third places. But in terms of our combined uh, the gold ETF, what uh, Dr. Samanathan was also talking about, this is increasing. And uh, over a period of time, possibly these, uh, this increase is showing up even much faster than, uh, than the uh, gold monetization scheme. Okay. And then in terms of our drivers, if you see, India is you know, a young country, of course, and st we are still young, we, are still, we do not know whether we will remain young, we may become old before becoming rich, but uh, uh, thing is that at this point, you know, you will find at least from the demographic side, gold demand is going to continue, and when 50 percent, you know, populations below the age of 25 and 22 being the age uh, of, of marriage, then gold consumption will continue to dominate at least for, uh, you know, for few decades, okay? So we do not need to think about that bridal demand for gold jewelry will go down. In terms of, in terms of other uh, drivers, of course our income is increasing. So with increasing in income, demand for gold consumption goes up and at the same time, you see that on the right chart, you, we have the uh, CPI inflation, as we find more uh, more volatility in inflation. Inflation itself is a volatility measure. Insl inflation itself is an uncertainty measure. So inflation itself drives gold demand. And variation in its, uh, of, of inflation drives gold demand even more. So that's, I think, two, two parts I'm talking here. Inflation, the level of inflation drives gold demand. Even the variation of inflation also drives gold demand. And third is, when inflation is high, Variability of inflation is also high. In all three components, inflation plays a very critical role. Again, let me uh, iterate. The inflation level, as an uncertainty measure, it, it affects gold demand. Inflation, uh, you know, as a, uh, uh, as a change of inflation also drives it. And at the same time, when we have high inflation, we have high uncertainty. That also drives gold demand. So I think one of the basic uh, I think premises of gold demand, of course, lies with how we understand how prices are behaving. So along with income, inflation plays a very critical role. That's what we find it even in the data. Not just that, even India's, you know, this is one of the most peculiar commodity where the demand for gold actually is dominated by rural areas. You know, rural, you, you will find you do not have markets for anything. You cannot even sell your, your uh, you know, agriculture or farm output, but there are gold shops. It's a very specific country we are talking about. You find gold shops everywhere in the rural domain. More than 55% of our gold consumption is dominated by rural. And this also has a very nice dimension, you know. The gold demand in rural also varies with your agricultural productivity and monsoon. If monsoon becomes better, you will find gold consumption is showing up. So in many ways, you find the dimensions or the characteristics of gold consumption in India is driven by its own uh, roots, which are dominating in the rural area itself. It not necessarily an urban phenomena, and that is what when I think Dr. Samanathan was talking about, that it's not necessarily relating that it is the rich who are consuming gold, it is possibly the poor who are you know, consuming gold as well. And then let us talk about financialization of, uh, of gold, and gold has been one of the biggest import component for us, which leads to uh, you know, a lot of issues on managing our uh, you know, current account deficit. So dependence of gold import, because we do not produce much here, uh, I think uh, you can see that value of gold import, we are one of the, I think we are the fifth in the, in the, in the world. And in terms of, 
uh, household, Indian household holds 250,000 tons of gold. This is as per the World Gold Council. And of which, you know, the gold as a financial asset currently is only, uh, you know, mobilizing out of that is only 0.6%. So you can see that gold is still held as just as, you know, asset, uh, not in the form of financial. And then gold back financial products, which are gaining importance, but not uh, as important as you find maybe in other financial products. So then about, about uh, some of the gold back financial products, how we are going to value them, you will find, suppose you talk about sovereign gold bond. Sovereign gold bond for each tranche, you know, price of gold is set, uh, the average, the PM fixing for gold provided by the IBJA in the three days before the issuance. You know, from here onwards, I'm going to talk about how the same commodity is, is being valued so differently by different organizations, okay? Here, we are talking about sovereign gold, gold bonds will be valued based on what IBJA provides, okay? Number one. Now you see what is gold monetization scheme, it is talking about, no, it's not based on IBJA. Here, we are talking about the valuation would be done by, uh, you know, LBMA gold spot and adjusted for customs duties and use Indian USD and INR rate. So very different, you know, we're talking about the same product. One, we are talking about in terms of financialization that you value it as per, uh, you know, uh, as per the association given uh, number, second one, gold bank, uh, gold back financial product, uh, you know, gold monetization scheme is talking about, no, don't use that, you use LVMA price. Then the role of benchmark comes, you know, benchmark provides a kind of, I think, independent way of uh, presenting and fair value. Uh, I should not say fair value per se, but I think it provides a value which could be based on, uh, based on information available in the market and it provides uh, price discovery uh, based on a transparent mechanism. That's why benchmarks are important. It's not that given a benchmark means people are going to use that number, but benchmark gives a, gives a floor on which you can take a call. At least, you know, if you have a benchmark price for gold, possibly we are going to create one of the biggest public good in India if we can have a benchmark price for gold but we do not have yet, okay. Then you find the gold link financial product where ETFs are involved. There we are talking about, again, you use LBMA and, you know, terminologies are not exactly the same. So you are SEBI mandates here that you use LBMA AM fixing uh, uh, and then RBI reference rate. RBI no longer is the reference rate for USD INR. It is done by FBIL, though it is sometimes you will find it is produced in RBI website. But there it talks about, you know, carry cost and customs you adjust to produce again uh, to give a benchmark prices. So you find, so I'm talking about this is the third one I'm, I, I said. Then you find the variation across cities, you know. This is where if you look at the data in the internet, you get even more confused. This is the source I have written. The, the source are, you know, grow data set which has been increasingly used on few dates you will find, I'm talking about 3rd February to 12th February, you find the prices are like that. Do you think that Delhi prices are so high? May not be. I'm not, I'm not sure. Some of, some of you, those who follow Delhi gold prices, this provides, as if it provides a huge arbitrage opportunity of, of gold if you, if, if you do it in Delhi. But that's not the case. You find not just about Delhi price, I'm talking about from a particular source. If you take the comparison across platform, you price, find that prices differ. NSE, MCX, IBJA, all three prices are showing very different numbers. Now, we do not know which one is right and which one is, has more bias for anything. Not just that, you will find, uh, you know, the, the same, same data if you take from, uh, you know, other source, I'm talking about the same data. Here I have used the grow as well as the, uh, uh, the platform data. Same data if you source from other exchange, uh, other source like Bank Bazaar and others, you will find here Kolkata is showing high. What is happening? This is daily price I'm talking about. We do not know exactly which price is right and where it is. 
Not just that, you take the example of I come from Ahmedabad, take the uh, uh, Ahmedabad CG road, which is one of the posh area of, of markets, there 12th February, I'm talking about three, four days back, uh, and you find, you know, Tanish, Kalanjuelas, Joy Lucas, all are available there. In three different places, you have three different numbers. They are in the same spot, are talking about. You look at their website, you find three different numbers. And that numbers actually vary to the tune of 500 to 700 per 10 gram. It's, it's substantial. It's not that you can e simply ignore. So this is you find even in a bus stop, there are shops which vary these prices. So based on that, and then you finally come to Central Bank Reserve, Reserve Bank, okay? Reserve Bank comes, and Reserve Bank, it, this is 2023 uh, Reserve Bank's annual report. It says that we use LVMA gold price, US dollar, and market exchange rate. Here, Reserve Bank does not talk about any customs duty or other things, okay? So you find four or five organizations are using and publicly translating those now numbers to the public, which are quite different. Okay, and then, of course, I think one of the significant development in India, uh, again, following what the Secretary was talking about, is IIBX, but, you know, we thought, can we create a benchmark based on IIBX? But I think IIBX still not there. Trading uh, trades are very thin. Of course, potential exists, but we cannot use at this point in time because, you know, even the, the sometimes if you find there are trades, not necessarily in gold, more trades are there in silver. Okay. And then finally, you find what current, uh, you know, international benchmark is, is doing. This is primarily dominated by LBMA, spot price. What they do is it's based on an auction methodology, what they do. They have participants from banks as well as from investment firms. They have a auction platform. Using that auction platform, they follow a transparent type of methodology. You know, transparent, it's not that easy to find out what methodology they, they follow. We had to really struggle to or dig out some of this information, what they do. Basically, it's a, you know, you allow both, uh, you know, uh, buyer and seller. And this is the process they, they try to follow, is price displayed, uh, displayed on the IC uh, trading platform, participants enter buy and sell orders, and then you, you use a benchmark by which you are going to accept it, or if there is an imbalance, you go back. This is a very uh, a standard way of benchmarking methodology. They follow, once you find both, I think, mm, you know, long and short match, then you go for a balance and then benchmark published. So this is what they are doing it and twice AM and uh, uh, PM prices that they are, uh, you know, uh, finally publishing this. And this number has been used globally, many other places, okay, including in India, in many cases what we are going to use. Now, IBJA, what is, it is doing is effectively not very transparent. It says that it takes from the 10, uh, you know, um, uh, bullion dealers and possibly they have, if you think about it, you know, uh, LIBOR has gone, you know, for manipulation. Now suppose these IBJA is taking these 10 bullion dealers, if they can control, you have a you have super way of manipulating gold market. You have no way to control, you know. This is this is you know so uh, I think important for us that we know of course it's an association and this is maybe managed uh, efficiently. I have no idea about it. But what it tells that you take 10 big dealers, uh, the, the problem is possibly these 10 dealers also dominate, uh, you know, IIBX. We don't know. It can happen, okay. So that means there are biases which can dominate the, the gold price discovery. So what you can, uh, you can, even in MCX gold pri price, they have a methodology, but MCX gold prices also vary a lot. And, but their methodology at least looks like there is a way to, you know, uh, towards uh, a benchmarking type. At least they have a, a method of team mean methodology. If there are high variation, you uh, chop that head or the, the below part and take the middle and then try to get an average number. At least some methodology, you, you find it there. Okay. So this is what you see in Indian market. And then, what in this paper we are trying to propose is, is kind of, you know, uh, kind of using gold primarily as a commodity. You know, the methodology coming here is the 
uh, is the methodology used in, in crude price? And that methodology is quite, quite sound now. We are trying to follow similar, not necessarily exactly the same thing. The technical part I'm not presenting here. So basically you are trying to get the fundamental uh, value of the commodity. You can estimate that using uh, historical trade data, but that's not the only thing what we should do. What we can, we are talking about is that uh, there is uh, the convenience yield curve of gold we can actually create based on some earlier work using futures and spot prices. From there we can have a theoretical spot and theoretical spot you can compare with actual spot rate and based on the price differential you can actually identify whether the price differential is coming from some bubble or stable component. Capture only the stable component of that price differential and add that, you know, it's, it's a kind of carry cost that you add along with the, the, the fundamental value what you can get from the, uh, from the uh, past data. Okay, so basically it's a way of using LBMA but with a far more refinement. If we can do that, then possibly we are working with uh, data, hopefully, uh, you know, at some point in time we can share some of the numbers soon. So I think this is a, a just a, uh, a, a, a research what we have been working on and maybe another six months time we should have something very uh, substantial to show the numbers also. Uh, thank you. Any questions or any comment would be very useful. Uh, see, I think there are a couple of steps we are following. We are working with the data now, and then we would like to take it to the financial benchmark India. Okay. okay, because you know they are the authority to use or accept or discard it. Okay, so uh, that may take maybe another four or five months. One round of that has been done with Harish. He is sitting here. He has been a kind of guiding force to work on this. And of course, the India Gold Policy Center. So another six months, uh, sir, I'd be able to come back. And it, uh, what you are developing is just a theoretical model? No, no, no. It's an algorithm. It's, it's an algorithm. It's okay, an it's algorithm. a theory-based algorithm which follows standard benchmarking methodology. So which means once that is attested, approved, and all, people can actually. Exactly. That's the plan. I think Um, I think again I'm saying you know the it's not that people are going to use this as the price you know when you suppose if, if you look at the uh, rupee dollar you know uh, today's rate if you go to a bank it's not the exact rate what you find in maybe uh, FIBIL or the RBI rate but that provides so much information that how much you are charged you know at present I think we do not have any basis to uh, take that call. What you are telling, madam, is, is true, but I think that still does not serve the purpose of a benchmark. Right, of course. So that yeah. means they are trying to say internet yeah. coming yeah. up to the level. Professor, <coughs> uh, while I appreciate what you've done, I just wanted to understand there are large number of determinants of demand for gold and large number of determinants of supply of gold, at least in our country. Yeah. Can you factor in all the dominant ones on both sides in this benchmarking? No, I actually benchmarking usually do not go to the demand supply part. Okay, benchmarking is primarily done based on the market information. Okay, primarily. Again, I am saying you know it's not. Uh, what I told at the beginning, what are the potential drivers for gold that I showed, uh, told both from the supply as, the, uh, as well as from the demand side. And I said that uh, the, the, uh, the dominance of gold, both demand and supply will continue. But from there, how to derive a kind of fair price, for that we will be requiring only the market information. Okay. Does such an information vary on a daily basis? 
It will, of and course. It's very, very substantially, if you have sanctions and things like that. It will, of course, of course. Of course, the very similar way you find what happens to crude oil market. So, um, quick question, I think related to the previous. Um, that is, uh, you mentioned that currently there is an, uh, a kind of arbitrariness in the way the prices are being set. In the proposed way also, there could be some arbitrariness. If you could shed some light on that, where are the aspects that are subjective yeah. or not so objective? Okay. So I, uh, you know, um, I did not talk about whether it was arbitrary or not. What I am saying, you know, the people do not have uh, uh, enough idea about what is the possible level of my price, okay. Whether there is a scientific basis to make it for, it may so happen that everybody is trying to put a scientific basis, okay. That may not be arbitrary per se, but what we are proposing here if you have seen in the last slide I'm talking about that you try to get that the uh, convenience yield part which varies a lot and from there you take the bubble part out. You can estimate that and remove that and take the stable part, add that with the, with the, uh, the, the price. So that would still involve uh, uh, some subjectiveness, but uh, it's any not any benchmark has subjectiveness. Any benchmark, we, you know, any benchmark we is going to use a lot of data. From that data, you are going to give a value which will effectively represent the market value. So there will be subjective method. You know, yeah, many places you will find people are using, uh, you know, three SD means the, the observation which are, which are less than 3SD and above 3SD, you just chop them off, okay? People use trimmed mean, people use weighted mean, but for each case, you can use a method which is going to track the market, you know? Trades must be enough there to take that value. What we are proposing, it's basically a, a price which is uh, where the most trades are, trades are happening, and at the same time, the outliers are removed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, I, there is another question. Yes, please, yeah. go ahead, sir. So once this uh, model is implemented, do we have a, a, a what we call a roadmap for implementation? Yes, true. Do we have? Yes. And does it also take care of the oh, virtual thing that we are talking about, which we buy and then physical gold which we buy from the shop? It will, because it's a public information, you know. The, the, the point is, if this is, you know, hopefully this will be accepted. We are always optimistic as academicians. So if this is accepted, then with, with some modification, then it will be published on a daily basis, maybe twice. Okay, then public has a, a way to know what is the benchmark uh, administrator based price of gold. I know that, that we, we, we can factor, we can factor in that, okay, in the benchmarking methodology, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask one thing, that uh, in gold, if you are, say, talking in LBMA, the LBMA fix which you talked about, the benchmark is, is based on 400 ounces bars of 9995 purity, while all the cities which you showed, some of them are 999 markets, some of them are 995 markets, some of them are 100 gram markets, some of them are kilogram markets. And uh, you went to ETF, which was basically the underlining is LBMA good delivery bar. Well, well, when we went to IBJA now, why we changed? Because there were certain supplies which were from Dore, which was 2% less duty, and uh, UAE was 1% less duty. So in your benchmarking, are you standardizing yourself on India good delivery or s something else or you want to think about it and you want to make I, a I think few things are still not very clear, sir, what you are saying. We have to think a little more about it, what you are saying. But for us, yeah, you know, benchmark will not be for one particular period of gold. We have to give at least four different. Yeah, because there are quite yeah, a bit. And, quite a uh, bit. We have to. That part is clear that we have to do that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Professor, one last question for Please. me. We have this uh, tool called Forum, which uh, I think World Bill Council, particularly, we have worked with uh, the Oxford uh, University and all that and put it up. Uh, have you uh, looked at that piece? 
not just so for your input, but because any feedback you give also will be very useful. To I'll, you. I'll, we I'll have this forum which gives you the, uh, the uh, inverted value of gold and things like that using GDP growth, demand, various factors which you can plug in yourself and there are some standard factors. So in your study, whenever it is there, we can also look at <coughs> that model. We want to just give a uh, fundamental, it's not a price uh, determinant, but it just says what it should be the you know, kind of value of gold given all these factors. So if uh, that can also be used, that will be helpful. Thank you. Thank I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you.